Greg, how you doing? Hope everything is well today. You know, I I, I, I don't know. I, yeah, I know what it was. I got up this morning and I started working on some legal documents and stuff like that. And as I was doing, I had to look something up. And in looking something up, I had to go to, I don't know what possessed me to go to YouTube, but I went to YouTube. And in going to YouTube, I found all these videos by this guy whom I had never seen before. And Well, I actually, I had, but he never. it never dawned on me to clearly click on anything of his, I don't believe. You know, because he had dreadlocks and he had this. And and most of the times when I read the subtitles or the titles up under his videos, it wasn't something really that I wanted to watch. And he didn't look like anybody whom I really wanted to see. But today was uh, a little bit different because it was bombarded with a ton of videos by this man. Somewhat like this woman. This woman right Never here. Never have heard about this pastor. All of a yeah. sudden... His video and me came too. up on my YouTube timeline. And that's what I've I never inputted too. his name because I've never heard about him. I've never yeah. inputted up any title and concerning him. And all of a sudden I he came on my uh, YouTube uh, timeline. So I decided mm -hmm. to click on this that's video and was. watch yes, and see. Because the me. first thing when I saw his name, I thought, okay. And, it, and you know what struck me about her that I was in so much agreement uh, with what she was saying. That she got up and she had never seen this person on YouTube. She thought it was a new minister and so on and so forth. She had never seen anything, never watched anything by him. And then she was bombarded with all these videos today, just the way I was. And it's odd, we began to think the same exact things, the very same exact things. And what does that mean? That means discernment. But not only discernment, because she watched it. And I began to watch a series of his videos because I didn't know where I was, whether I was going to do something in regards to him or not on, on YouTube. So I began to watch a series of them because if I'm going to say something about something, I want it to at least be from a point of knowledge or be, you know, be correct. Because I saw it and this is my opinion because I saw, you know, I didn't see half of it. I saw a little bit of it. Da, 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 da. But I wanted to see what he was saying, because when you talk about ministry, you really have to listen to what people are saying, and you have to listen to what they're saying on various topics. And so I began to listen and play through a series of his videos and some by his wife. And I'll, and I'll have a video about her. Uh, well, perhaps it'll be in the same video. But anyway, I began to listen to various videos by him and commentaries by people such as Brian Kahn. And if I begin to agree with people whom I, for the most part, totally disagree with, even Earl Carter down in um, Orlando who came out, you know, and did that whole thing at the convocation about gays in, in the church and, you know, where, where uh, Andrew Codwell was discovered with, I ain't gay no more. I mean, when if I agree with that man, then you something here is wrong with this person that we're all talking about because I am just as far removed from Earl Carter and uh, Brian Karn as I can possibly be but my goodness I have to say I do agree with exactly the things they're saying about this person and because what that woman was saying and, and, and discernment, but also it was uh, confirmation. It was confirmation that what I had thought, because she thought the exact same things, and I mean all the exact same things, was confirmation to me that this person, Matthew Stevens' son, is a false prophet. He's a false apostle. He's a false pastor. It's false teaching. And as I watched the videos, I could clearly see that he had learned the Bible. He clearly knows. And just as the young lady said, very articulate. Advance your walk with God and also advance your ability to move the resources of the invisible world, the gifts of the spirit, etc. So they taught it like, you know, talking in tongues. Can de definitely, you know, pull people in with the way he speaks. But I could tell that he learned it. He almost reminded me of um, a pastor who had been in our time, a very young man, and he said he had gone around to various churches and sat down and listened to all the pastors and these preachers, these 
mega preachers with these great voices, these great orators of the word, and he learned from them. And when you hear him speak, he sounds like one of them, well trained in the technique of how they do what they do. And he possesses so well that he's very popular even now. In fact, he's on, he's on the national scene now. And I won't call his name because you would know him. But he reminded me of that because of his voice and the way he read. He's a better, better reader than I am. <laughs> you know, articulate in the word and how he ex explained what he was explaining and expound upon what he was the Bible expounding talks about upon. Let me do my best Though I didn't necessarily agree with everything because sometimes to he what? seemed like he wanted to get deep for you and that he wanted to show you, you know, some things that I didn't necessarily believe that were going in the right directions, but sometimes he, he did hit upon some things. I said, wow, I could agree with that. I could. And that is, this is how you have to be careful. The Bible talks about itchy ears. I can tell this guy has studied even those white preachers. He reminded me of the guy from Cleveland who has that church. And I understand that many people now are building their churches, not with altars, but with stages because it's basically a performance. They are performing. So they no longer have the altars and the way we, you know, have for many years when we walk into a church, you know, the sanctuary looks like. No, the sanctuaries don't look. The new sanctuaries are these people who have this like new Jack concept of what religion and church should look like and be like. And they had the bands playing all before and the groups and the people are upstanding and moving to the music. And with the white churches, they're jumping up and down like they're in a trance. And they got all the guys with the tattoos all over them playing music that sounds like rock music. And so this is what the guy reminded me. And as I watched those videos, I, re I recall watching the earlier videos and then later vi videos of them. And he's preaching and speaking about the word in all of these videos. But in the earlier videos, he was not as tattooed as he is now. And he had dreads. So now he's cut off the dreads and he has like a goldish type top on top of his hair. And what I thought about is the transition. I can see where money has changed his look and his wife's look. And how it's more um, acceptable to people who are looking. It legitimizes them. In fact, I watched the video of them in England and both him and his wife are standing with dreadlocks and they both have on glasses. And it reminded me of my nephew who always wanted to be like T.D. Jakes. And so he didn't even need glasses, but he would put on glasses, clear glasses, and he would put them on to look more knowledgeable and sophisticated and more like a T.D. Jakes kind of and so I, I, when I saw them both wearing these glasses over there, eyeglasses over there in uh, England somewhere, wherever they were in Europe, and they both had on a pair of eyeglasses to legitimize themselves as they want to seem educated. And the thing that also got me was in the beginning, he called himself doctor and his wife didn't have any doctorate behind her name. And as you continue to watch, she becomes Dr. Camilla Stevenson. All right. And then he becomes apostle. Matthew Stevenson, and I begin to think, I even doubt that his name is Matthew, because it's all a persona, it's all an illusion, and we know that the devil is the great deceiver, he's the creator of lies and deception, and he wants to lure and pull people in, and he knows how to do it, and so now you have this new Jack preacher who in, in Chicago, and now everybody wants to become like him, and he's being invited to different places to come and preach because he's drawing in the millennium crowd. Who's that? The people who don't really know the church as the church is supposed to be. They know what they want the church to be for them, but they don't know what the church is supposed to really be like because you have to be transformed. The church cannot conform to you. And the, and the young people want the church to conform. Well, you know, it's a new day, it's a new this, it's a new that. I was absolutely shocked by some of the young ladies in our church when I heard one of them say that she was going to go get herself a tattoo. Now, she grew up in the church, all of her life in the church, still in the church, talking about going to get some tattoos. This was, I couldn't believe it. 
And then another one of them I overheard talking to me saying how she wanted to go and take some pole lessons. She's going to take some dancing pole lessons because this is something that she wanted to do in the bedroom with her husband. And I was floored when I heard that. So you have the new people, the young people now, they want to leap out and attach themselves to every kind of thing. But you cannot do it. These things are demonic. Tattoos came from idolatry. Piercing is out of idolatry. All the marking of your body is out of idolatry. These things are of the devil. They are of demonic spirits. And the devil will come in to lure you in. This guy looks handsome. His wife, after they got, you know, got all this new look, they look totally different. They look, they can, they'll pull people in based upon how they look dressed in leather and all of this and, you know, skinny jeans and all of this stuff and the knees um, torn out and this new Jack look, the new Jack church, the new Jack black church, because they're emulating the white churches now, but he leaped ahead of the churches to get into the game and he started presenting himself on Periscope and live on Facebook and live on YouTube and began to draw people in and got a following. Now he claims that he has 60 churches that he is the overseer of. And he claims that he has all of this. And all these young people, I watched the video, they're on retreat, him and his staff. He got 68 staff members. He's bragging and walking around and introducing you and putting everybody in front of that camera. And he's talking about them. And this is Dr. Soul. Practically everybody was a doctor. And I wondered, after I, after I began wondering about everybody being a doctor, then he stopped calling people doctor. It's a game. It's deception. It's a ploy. The devil is trying to suck you in. And the devil will give the young people what the young people think they want. And they believe that it is okay with God. Biblical scripture tells you the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. God does not change. We are to come out of the world. We're not to be transformed by the things of the world or how the world looks and how the world carry themselves and all the things of the world. No, you cannot be holy and want to walk in an unclean world as unclean people walk. You must come out from among them and be ye transformed. And transformation means a brand new you. A new way of talking, a new... This guy, I was listening to him talk. He's going, yo, when he's talking to his people. He's talking... This, and, I, and I imagine this is great for the young people who don't know any better. But it's not going to get you to heaven. It's not going to get you there with people playing like they are for you and teaching you the biblical text. And making everything seem all right when it's not all right. The world is the world. And the church has got deems us to be is a whole entire entity and all these fake new jack and jive time people coming into the church trying to perpetrate these frauds and trying to take people into hell and make themselves rich because they don't care about you it's all about money reputation and fame worldly things the things the devil tried to tempt jesus with Put him up on the pedestal, all the way up on the steeple. Told him to look and I'll give you all of this. My Lord. My Lord. As if the devil could give Jesus the world. The world already belonged to Jesus. His father created it. And there was nothing made that was made without him. What could the devil give to him except be a liar? And so you have these frauds and perpetrator who are out there trying to steal our children and rob them from victorious life and from going to glory by appeasing their worldly tastes and saying it's all right, come as you are. You don't need to be purged. You don't need to be clean. You don't need to be washed up. You don't need to be anything. Just come. God knows your heart. No, you need more than that. You need more than that. You need to know the word of the Lord for yourself and stop following behind these people with these slick tongues and smooth speakings who are entreating you 
with the sound of their voice. The Bible says you will know them by their fruits, by their works, you'll know them. That lady confirmed everything that I was thinking. It was confirmation. What she was saying was correct. It was the exact same thing that I was thinking. This man, this Matthew Stevenson and his wife are fakes. They are frauds. Don't get caught up in the hype. Don't lose yourself following the wrong things. Know ye the word of the Lord. And hear his voice and his voice only. And another you should not follow. God bless you. God bless you. Bye.